All right, Lady Anna, what is this? Hey, everybody. It's a tornado warning here in New York State, but yes. uh, we're going to stay nice and dry indoors and get started with a show and tell, the most fun you can have for 30 minutes without getting wet. It's me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada. We're in the Ada Fruit Factory in downtown Manhattan, yeah. which is... There's lightning. Lightning and there rain. There might be an inter internet disruption. If there yes. is, we will immediately try to get back online. But if not, don't worry. We'll yeah. be back it, eventually. I mean, like, it's... It's, it's storming, storming. We'll do the best we can. The, the planet is trying to send us some subtle messages. It's maybe we should look into some things. Listen to it. Uh, let's check in. Let's uh, check in with some people uh, from DigiKey and from Adafruit, and also from people oh, from the community to see what they're up to. Kevin from DigiKey, you're up first. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Glad to see you guys are safe in the the lightning storm. Yeah, the thunderstorm. We finally got rain. We hadn't had rain all summer in Minnesota, which is very odd. Our lakes are starting to dry up. There is only like 9,000 lakes instead of 10,000. There, there seems but, to be a, it's either there's a drought or it's a flood now. Like pick, pick one sometime the same week. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's really upsetting. It's the first time in my life that they have banned campfires. And, oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's really too bad. All right. Wow. Well. So what I'm showing is I showed you a little bit about digital campfire now. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, I should have done that. I should have created a campfire on this uh, matrix portal instead of what I did. <laughs> yeah, you can still do that. Yeah. We, we talked a lot about air quality last week, and I spent more time than I'd like to admit researching air quality after realizing how quick my when I start talking, you can see it, the numbers jump up just from me talking and getting mm. close to this. Mm. It, it's pretty amazing. And then I, I decided to take this thing and add it, add get it internet enabled. So it's now reading the time off the internet. Yay. And I'm planning on continually adding things to this. I want to have weather on here so I can tell if it's a, a thunderstorm like you guys are having. Mm. Or, you know, it's just one step at a time. But air quality seems to be a big thing these days. And it's, uh, it, it's really interesting to read how important it is and how quick just CO2 can fill up a room if you're just talking. Yeah, well, this is, you know, if you can't measure something, you can't improve it. But now you, you're measuring something real time so you can actually improve it. Yeah, it, it's it's insane. Like even now, just setting it down, it already dropped down quite a bit. Yeah. And if I start talking into the sensor, it'll fill up. and. Yeah, it sounds like uh, almost no air movement in your room. Yep. Okay. So I, I did a little research and I've kind of revamped my room. I added more, a bigger air intake and, you know, made sure the vents were open instead of closed and... It, it's just really, really interesting what you learn from a project that you were not planning on learning. Yeah. Yay, and, science. And, and luckily, there's not an, a global airborne virus that. <laughs> <laughs> luckily. Very true. Yeah. yeah. But no, this is a side effect. Th well, there's a good thing with this. So we use these air. We use the same ones. This is Adafruit project. And in places that are that have good ventilation and transmission rate is lower. CO2 is one of the things that you can look at if. There's not a lot of people in a space. There's probably not going to be as much CO2, and so mm -hmm. it's 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 a way you can't do like you know, COVID testing in the air quite yet, um, but you could do this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Well, All thanks right. so much, Kevin. Thank you, right. Kevin. You guys, All take right. care. Have a good night. Yay. Thank you. Good to see you. Stay safe. All right. Next Stay up, dry. let's go to Dylan, and then after Dylan, we'll go to Melissa. Dylan. Hello, Dylan. Take it away. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Um, I have a few things, or two things to show. We have first um, this, which is a little thing I made. Um, or I didn't make it, I designed it. Um, but you can, it essentially lets you put like, a keyboard on top of your mouse. Oh, Ooh. that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, well, okay, it's not my idea. I stole it from like some Japanese company, but like- Good stealing. Nobody needs to know that. Um, I also made one in aluminum. Because I kind of feel like it, like kind of looks a bit better. Good yeah. artists borrow, great artists steal and share okay. on show and tell. Nice. Um, and then we also have um, these. I made some coiled cables with the like YC8 connectors that were um, recently stocked in the Adafruit shop. Um, a blowtorch may or may not have been involved, and I may or not may not have been blowtorching um, a heat shrinked thing of uh triple a batteries right but um yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah so oh well your fingers will grow back so it's not like, back. if you're if you're, if you're like under 25 it's yeah. yeah and like i mean i have a carbon monoxide detector now so like okay air quality is the theme tonight. apparently air quality solves all problems 
All right. All right. Looks great. You've got all sorts of key projects going on. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks so much, right, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. All right. Next up, let's go to Melissa. Hey, Melissa. And Melissa. Hello. Spring. Yes. Uh, so I've been working on this code editor. I um, took one that Scott had actually done, and it didn't really have much in the way of style to it. And I've been applying this new one. And so I have a. That's good. Um, a clue connected right now. So I'm just going to hit connect because I previously appeared it and then I'm going to hit bond. And so that'll go ahead and load this and it'll load all the code that's on it currently. And then we can also go to the serial to see there. Oh. And I have it so like you can go ahead and resize it to all awesome. sorts of different oh, that's sizes. that's nice. This is great. Is there so, anything browsers can't do? Uh, currently, I was working on the buttons up here, and they're not currently functional, so I'm going to probably just uh, comment, the, comment those out, but wow. it'll work as it currently was working, which was it would just kind of save the file as you edit it. Mm. That's cool. All right. Well, looking forward to uh, trying this soon. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much, Melissa. All right. We're going to go to John Park next. JP, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, so I just put out a guide on this little guy. It's uh, called the Deluxe 4x4 NeoPixel keypad, and it uses this really nice aluminum uh, keypad case that we have. I've got a Cutie Pie M0 in there running some Arduino code. And this is uh, keeping a tempo uh, of 120 beats per minute right now that'll send out little MIDI clock signals to things. And then I'm just using it to run a software synth, but the nice thing is you can put like a couple of octaves of a particular key that sounds good. So I like how it's really clicky. It kind of goes with like the the vibraphone. It is, yeah, you're right. Yeah. A little percussive element to it. So yeah. Uh, so that guide is out and uh, you can Grab that. You can do anything you want with it. Of course, it could be uh, USB HID stuff, USB MIDI stuff, non-USB things. You could make some little tic-tac-toe games on there with the LEDs, I suppose, if you want. Uh, but it is uh, it is a good project for people who want to grab our ortho snap-apart keypad and then place it into a nice case and hook up a little uh, cutie pie to it. I like how you made it really easy. It's just like you just snap into 4x4, four four and because everyone uses the same spacing, about 0.75 inches, it's like just fits. It just fits. And uh, I was really impressed because there was something you had said at one point that you had done with the design, which is when you snap off a whole column, the NeoPixel line and uh, continues to yeah. work. Which no, it does exactly. As long as it's it's rectangular or square, yeah. the, you don't have to jump or anything. It'll actually do the right thing by, by weekly passing the NeoPixel signal down. Um, you can sort of see the design. It was a little bit of a, a, little bit of a hack, but I thought it was... Um, it's great. It kind of does the thing that you want it to do. Yeah, I don't yeah. think people realize how that isn't what most um, ortho pads do. Like usually you do have to do some jump ring, but I really wanted, yeah. I wanted to do it so it's like you can have the minimum number of wires possible. Very it easy. Yeah, it works great. In fact, I have it open open in the back so you can kind of see the, the, the wires. So, uh, whoa. so the only wiring I have is rows columns, rows are in blue, columns are in yellow. There's a green line there, which is my one NeoPixel line and the rest of it's yeah. all in PCB and then power and ground. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I hope people, uh, you know, pick these up and, and use them to make um, pads. I'm also going to do, you know, a version that maybe that already has like a, a footprint for like, a, you know, a keyboard um, breakout. But, you know, I'm going to revisit this design. This design took so long. It, it, it was so tedious because, you, you know, what, what any change I made, I had to change 30 times. All over so. the place. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. this design took way longer than I wanted. <laughs> All right. Good work. We're going to be playing some of the videos that you did during the week on Ask an Engineer tonight. And this also uh, kind of looks like a Knight Rider prop, too. Like oh, little, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. That would Isn't be fun it? to do the little Larson da, scan. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And you can have the musical <laughs> stylings of <laughs> David Hasselhoff. <laughs> okay. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. <laughs> This website's free, everybody. Thanks, <laughs> <In my head. laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Jerry. All right. Next up. Name hey, Pedro. Hello. Hey, folks. Hey, guys. Hey. Hello, everybody. Here's what we have this week. All right. So this week, uh, still ramping up for the Halloween prop project. So this was a request from Phil. You yeah. really like Suicide Squad. And our task was to build the Rat Catcher's wand or communication device. 
And the hard part about this was it, I think it was in like three scenes in the entire movie. So I had like literally three shots to get of it. And that most yeah. of them, she's always covering it up or it's like completely. Or there's like rats. Yeah. There's rats or there's like dirt all over it. I think it, it looks right. really great. That looks exactly, you know, sometimes it's like making a prop look like the movie. It's, you know, part, I mean, again, their thing doesn't work either. It's not real, you know, it's a prop also. So well, as long as you can get it to the point where it's recognizable. I mean, when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, this is it. Yeah, I really like how they had like the JST wires all hanging out. So it was like, oh, cool. I get to incorporate that and I don't have to hide it. But yeah, yeah. it's uh, all. Yeah. Continue. Look, so, they probably built it the same way you did. I mean, like. It's, so like it's, just, just for, yeah, just so for folks know, and then also uh, disclosure, by the way, we have nothing to do with DC or okay. Marvel or Suicide Squad or anything. We happen to I'm like the movies. Watcher. We happen to like the movies <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> but we saw our stuff in the Suicide Squad. They used um, one of our boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a little segment on that before. But then when we saw this, we're like, oh, this is a really cool project to show people that if they see something in a movie, um, not only could they make that, but, um, you know, there's entire careers now just making things for cinema. And a lot of these um, media places use our stuff. So this was a combination of all that. Yeah. What but anyways, we, have, we don't get paid to do this. We had to pay to watch the movie. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't favorite. be surprised if they used a bunch of the same components, which is yeah. literally just the Circuit Playground Express and the uh, 2200 uh, cylindrical battery. Perfect. I like the simplicity of this. I like I like no solder prop projects. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's. I know that it's you know it's not. There, there's more elegant ways to build this, but I I do like um, I do like it, and I think you know it's funny that you you the the ball the Circuit Playground Express fits perfectly in it, and I also right. like that it only shines out the end. I actually kind of like that a little bit. Yeah, I kept looking at the scenes thinking, oh, do I have to put like a ring on the back? But in the end, it's like, oh, no, just use like a, the filament that'll diffuse it. You know, yeah, I like it. It, just, it seems very directional. I think it's I think it's cool. I think it worked out. Yeah. Yep. So we talked about all the CAD on uh, 3D Hangouts and then you can get all the Fusion 360 files or just the STLs if you just want to print it out. And a nice little simple assembly. You can check out the learn guide for that. All right. Great work. Then, yeah. Pedro. And we'll play some of these videos and more on Ask an Engineer tonight. That's right. So, thanks, guys. Cool. All right. Bye, folks. All right, we're going to go to Liz, and then we're going to go to Mark. Liz, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, what you got going on? Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, um, I had breadboarded up a fuzz uh, guitar pedal circuit, and I finally did a PCB layout for it. Um, so I sent this off to Osh Park, so should ho hopefully I've been like a week or two. Um, but it was cool, because I feel like I got to understand the circuit a little bit more, like doing the layout and the schematic and everything. Um, and then on the silk screen, I got this um, like TV white noise mm. uh, as a design. So that'll be on the back along with the name. Um, I like the curvy. Then, I like the kind of like, it's curvy, but it's like there's curves that don't make any sense. And I'm kind of digging that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love curvy traces. I don't know why, but yeah. And I tried to keep it really small too. Like the resistors are actually made so that they'll be standing up for placement. Um, and yeah, and I won't like solder the pots like directly to the board. Like all wires coming out. Same for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. too. So it'll be nice and small. Um, so yeah, it's something I was working on. Looks good. All right. Well, good work. Keep at it and keep coming back. We'll do once it's all set up. Yeah. Once you yeah. do the PCBs, come on back. Bring your purple purple TV. All right. See you later, Liz. Good to see you. Thank you, Liz. All right, Mark, place out. What you got going on this week? Hey, Mark. That's good. Uh, I finally had time to play around with Whippersnapper. Uh, during Ask an Engineer a couple of weeks ago, I actually Yay. quickly set it up, and I thought I just wanted to see what I could do with it. So I'm going to adjust my camera down to where my fun house is sitting. Sorry. Um, so right now it's not doing anything, but I'll share my screen and there it goes. Um, and just to show the power that I found in even the minimal functionality in here right now, no code. And when I say I had a little time to play with it, this took about half an hour. Now through Adafruit IO, I can start controlling the LEDs. You can't really see the green one. Yeah, oh, yeah, we can see them. And the blue one and the red one. Wow. And well, this is cool uh, if you want to turn LEDs on and off, which is always yeah. fun. Um, the triggers in Adafruit IO already there is just amazing. So I've got a lot here. All these LED tests are all what you're seeing in front right now. Uh, but speaking of air quality, uh, you can take advantage of your existing feed. So 
I've got a couple triggers set up that is outside monitoring the air quality right now. We've had a lot of smoke fire, or fire smoke from the fires around us. Yeah. And it's easy to set it if it's greater than 50, then set right now, this is just onboard LED to turn on using multiple LEDs. So you can have a little warning system. Is the air good, yeah. green? Uh, I don't actually have a yellow LED I found yesterday. Uh, so it's blue uh, and red for bad. But this is all off existing feeds that I had already. Mm. So I didn't have to do anything more. I could immediately build a little display for indoors. And as I said, it took about half an hour of time. Yeah, yeah I like that's that. What folks want to do. I like MQTT, and you know, one of the things about Adafruit IO that I, that we did was like it uses an existing standard MQTT and all these feeds that subscribe and publish to each other. And so you can take advantage of the fact that you already have this like publish subscribe um, setup to have data come in and move around and through webhooks. And it, it's like it's just raw data. It reminds me a little bit of like you know. Um, you know, like Neil Stevenson's uh, article, you know, his, his early paper about Unix. It's like, well, if everything's a text file and you can manipulate everything as text files, um, you can have all these little tools in Unix where you can pipe data and move it and filter it and have things connect to other things. And so we're I'm, I, that kind of philosophy is, you know, what we're trying to do with IO, where you, you have these data feeds that are just really kind of plain text. And then you can really easily adapt and move them around because they're, they aren't um, they aren't like bubbles of data. They're just like raw data. Like the number is the number. It isn't like a number that's encoded in base 64 in a thing that's in an envelope that's PGP signed. It's like, no, yeah. it's a number. Yeah. And that's exactly what I found. I didn't, I hadn't never played with the triggers before. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, I can take this existing feed and then feed it into this other service that I've just used and it can trigger something else. And yeah, it, it was so simple. I mean, it was too easy. Yeah, no, we're definitely going to get the feedback that we make. We're make we're making uh, air quality sensors and IoT too easy. Too easy. It's kind of a yeah. that's fine. Um, but I think that one of the things too is when people think about the things they want to do and they say it in regular human language, IO kind of helps you along with that. Like, if this thing is fifty, then light up this LED green. And it's like a very, it's like, oh, I understand what that's doing. I understand what that is. And I, and I, there's something in my home that's going to light up after the air quality gets to a certain number. It seems to make sense for, I think, a lot of people. Yeah, that's what I found as a intro project to something that's new. This works great. And it's just, I mean, it took almost no time to figure it out. And yeah, for anyone learning, it's the perfect system. Yeah, for beginners, they can get started. And then for experts, they're like, I do not. I'm an expert. I don't want to waste the, my remaining years left because it takes took me so long to become an expert. So I want that. To, I want stuff to be easy now. <laughs> well, it's nice. I've got a bunch of things using Adafruit IO today. So now, if I want to hook up a display just indoors to show me, it's not like yeah. I have to be like, okay, do you find this, find this, and just write the same code you've written ten thousand times before. Yeah. That you can't find anymore because who knows where you saved it. Yeah. So. I will yeah. keep giving good uh, beta feedback. Thanks for on testing that. it out and showing yep. this off. On this is... it's, it's all very new and you know we're in beta. And so anything that you find will help us. And we're going to, you know, we're going to create the same kind of system we have for CircuitPython where it's, it's there's releases and updates yeah. and hopefully people can also contribute. So if you have a sensor that we, isn't supported, you'll be able to contribute the code to it. So we can, you know, I mean, there's thousands of different sensors and, and we'll slowly get there. Um, but we're hoping that the community, you know, by having an open standard and having uh, all this code be available, hopefully we can get uh, people to contribute the code that they need to finish their projects uh, to work together. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing when that's out there. All, all right. right. Cool. Well, thanks, right. Mark. Sorry we made it so easy. Um, yeah. I could send you some crummy websites uh, later if to get frustrated about or something. Yeah. I have a list. I could send you. Sounds great. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all right. thanks a lot. Uh, Bye. So thanks, everybody. All right. That was, that's a that was wrap. It. We have, uh, you know, sometimes it's short and sweet. That sometimes was great. we go over. Super uh, chill. We have 10 minutes. We're going to be on uh, back with Ask Engineer at 8 o'clock. So stay tuned. Yeah. And for longtime viewers, we'll probably have a guest on Show and Tell Ooh, next week. That's right. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that next week. So we'll see you all later. Ask an Engineer starts in about 10 minutes. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye.